Welcome to the second episode of How to Paint. In this one, we're going to be completing the portrait we started last time. This portrait is part of a larger figure painting that has multiple figures in it. So for this one, we're just going to focus on the features of the face and the portrait itself. What I like about this portrait is that it's a side profile, so we don't have to worry about symmetry. Now here is the reference photo where I removed the background and kind of blended the edges soft in Photoshop. You can see that my painting is different from the reference photo. I'll talk about why that is a little later on. But here on the screen, I'm putting the colors that I use, which are Createx illustration colors, to make my basic flesh tone. These flesh tones are based off the Drew Blair palette, and you can adjust them by using your primary colors to either kill some of the color in it or shift the hue to a warmer or cooler tone. I went into a bit more detail on the colors I mixed for this in the first part of the video, which I'll have a link for in the video description. You could start wherever you like on a portrait, but generally I like to start around the eyes. So we could see this dark cast shadow here, right underneath the eyes, which is being cast by the eyebrow. So I'm going to start by laying in some tone, which is much lighter than the actual value, just to get this one started. So just like drawing where I put some graphite down, I do the same thing with paint. Using my airbrush here, I'm just laying down a very thin kind of messy first layer here just so I have something to work with. I know I can darken these later if I need to but you could see I can get my basic shapes in by using some freehand and some tools like a, a shield here which I'm using. I have a little bit of white mixed into this mixture to keep the value from getting too dark. Titanium white usually shifts the color a little bit cooler, so you could see here this flesh tone shifted almost toward a violet color, but that's fine for this, this underlayer painting. So you could see here I'm switching to my eraser. This is a ink eraser or a sand eraser, and it's very aggressive, and what I could do with this, I could pull out very subtle highlights in some of the areas just to define a few of the brighter spots that I need put in. I know I said this in my last video, but I want to repeat myself because this is something that took me quite a while to understand and to learn. When you're painting with an airbrush, it's really important to realize that you can't just spray lighter, opaque values over a painting that you have down. So if you have a base layer and you want to put a highlight, you can't just put a bright highlight on top because what's going to happen is any lighter opaque color has titanium white in it and that's going to shift the color blue. So you're going to get these very strange color shifts on a painting, especially on a portrait because a portrait is generally a warmer orange color and the blue from the white when it mixes together it kind of gives you this gray grisaille type look that is is very strange on a portrait you can work around it you could spray transparent orange on top of it or a warmer color to kind of shift it but it's annoying and it's it's difficult to keep your hues consistent if you're doing that so if you're going to make areas brighter the best way with any sort of airbrush that atomizes sprays little tiny dots of paint is to use an eraser to pull out the highlights you could always shift the highlights different colors later by spray, spraying um, transparent colors on top of them but this simple way of just using a eraser works great and is very similar to drawing because you're really doing the same thing you're removing the pigment for your highlights from my reference I can see that this area underneath this eye the cast shadow area here looks about correct so I could commit a darker paint to it um, to darken the value up here. The reason I put that lighter value down first is because I'm always going to make mistakes. Everyone does. And I can erase it and remove it much easier when the color is lighter. So here with this darker transparent color, I'm spraying it at almost 100% strength. So it gets very dark. And you can see here that the color on this one is a bit warmer than the base layer that I put down. The base layer was a bit cooler, this bluish purple type look. And this hue is closer to a reddish, dark orange, burnt umberish color, which is going to work a little bit more effective for a flesh tone. Now, with a transparent color like this, you have to be careful to not spray it too heavy. If you spray it 100% strength and pull all the way back on the trigger, you're going to get a, a tone that looks almost black, extremely dark. But if you hold the airbrush away about 6 to 10 inches away, and very slowly and lightly put your your paint down by spraying a very small amount you could build the layers up gradually so this area was dark so I, I went right into it because I had a base layer but you'll see in other areas where I want to go subtle 
I work very slow by keeping the airbrush farther away from the painting, again about 10 inches, and uh, just spraying the lightest, almost like a dusting layer of paint onto the canvas. A great thing about when the paint is thin like this too is that it's very easy to erase with these aggressive erasers. It's a little bit harder than, than graphite is to remove, but if you just press a little bit harder on your eraser, the paint will lift right up. The key though is to have a very smooth surface, so you want to prepare your canvas as smooth as possible, and I'll have a video in the future explaining how to uh, set one up. It's not hard, it's pretty simple, it's not expensive either. Moving up to the forehead here, I'm using the same color that I used for that shadow underneath the eye, and you could see here that it's, it's drastically different. Um, the reason it looks so different is just because I'm spraying it lighter, like I just talked about. I'm holding the airbrush a little bit farther away from the, the painting and just putting a very thin dusting down of the paint. Now, you could see when you, you're spraying a, a transparent color, it's, it's hard to get a very even, smooth coat. You can with some practice, but what I like to do is get it as close as I can to smooth and then use my eraser to come in and lighten any of the darker areas and try to just blend everything together. You can see like I'm doing it here. It also adds a little bit of texture to the skin, um, almost like some pores or some little imperfections on the skin. And then you can use a transparent color to spray over it to darken those and kind of make them a little bit more subtle. If you erase a highlight and pull it out very, very sharp, it's going to look strange. It's going to look a little bit too bright. But then you could always go back on top of it and spray a tiny bit of paint and it, it helps to even smooth it out. When I apply this paint, which is the Createx Illustration Color, I spray a thin layer and then I just wait about, I don't know, maybe 10-15 seconds before I start erasing. What this does is it, it dries it very, very slightly. The paint's not cured. Curing for this type of paint takes uh, probably about two days or so and then it, it dries very hard and it's, it's much more difficult to erase but if you wait a few seconds the paint will not be wet anymore so it won't just lift up and it will soft erase very similar to graphite for the side of the face uh, underneath the eye and where the cheek is i want a bit of texture to this to to look like some pores i don't want it very smooth so i'm spraying my transparent paint very thinly, very lightly. The reason I want it light is that I can erase into it, add some texture to it, and then spray again over it. So again, I keep going back to talking like how this is graphite. It's very similar to drawing with graphite. I'm building the value slowly. Put a very thin layer, erase some texture out, and that's going to lighten it, and then darken it up a little bit more by spraying a little bit more on top. So we can see here with the nose, I'm using same color as before, even where the nostril where it looks very dark. Um, that's the same transparent color. I just, I'm getting my shapes by spraying it very lightly and then using my eraser to define some of the forms, some of these areas that are a little bit brighter. Remember, when you erase, you have an area lighter, it's going to look closer to us. And any of the darker areas are going to look like they're rounding farther away from us. So we get that 3D effect here. So you can see just in about maybe 10 minutes, I got the basic shape of this nose and it looks pretty even and and correct. And to define some of the, the sharp edges, I'll use a shield. Um, because an airbrush is always going to give you a soft line, which is great for blending, but not so great when you want sharp, defined edges. In my painting, I have this figure leaning against someone else, so there's a very dark cast shadow underneath her face. You're not going to see in the reference photo, so you could just ignore the bottom part of this painting for now. If you watched any of my how to draw videos, you'll notice that when I blend graphite with a blending stump, I try to blend it in small circular motions. When I'm erasing paint on an acrylic painting or even on an oil painting, I try to do the same thing. I use an eraser to blend and erase the values out with circular motions. What this does is helps give a natural organic texture to the skin. I make sure that I keep these circles tight and close to each other. That way it looks like small little bumps and pores in the skin. And I don't want to rush too fast and try to blend a huge area. I just work a small section and then work my way over to other sections. 
erasing paint out with an eraser like this could be a bit of a pain in the ass because you have to work slow. There's really no way to rush this. So yeah, it could be a little bit tedious, but it, it pays off if you just go slow, maybe have something on in the background, a song or an audio book or something like that to help keep you busy. And then just work slow to slowly lighten the areas. Remember, a lighter area is going to appear closer to us. I'm slowing the video down to real time so you can see how slowly I work with an eraser. I noticed here on this area where the cheekbone is, we have a bright highlight that's kind of soft and transitions down into a shadow a little bit further down the face. So what I want to do is get a smooth transition. The way to do that is to press a little bit harder with the eraser where I want an area lighter. That's going to remove more paint, get us closer to the gesso on the canvas and make it appear lighter. If I want it a little bit darker, what I'll do is I'll just use less pressure. And what that does is it removes a little less paint and keeps the area a little darker. And just with the amount of pressure, you could adjust the value from dark to light by slowly working your way from one area to another. It's important to keep cleaning your canvas by brushing or blowing away the dust from the eraser because these erasers are pretty aggressive and they pull out a good amount of paint that will kind of sit on your canvas there and it's difficult to see your values with it. So you'll see as I work on this, I'm constantly brushing it away. Working on this area underneath the nose, basically around the mouth and the chin, the first thing I want to do is define the contour, the outline around it, and I want to keep this sharp. So I'm using a small French curve here, which is a, an airbrush shield, shield made out of mylar, and what it does is helps me give a nice sharp line so I have my edges defined. Now when I get into the painting of the lips here, I'm doing most of this freehand. If I need an area that needs to be a little bit sharper like that, I'll come in with my shield and just spray a tiny bit to give me a very thin narrow sharp line and if it's too sharp like we talked about before I can erase it and then I could spray over it to adjust it any way I need. Underneath the nose where the lips and the chin are you can see that this area is in a cast shadow so everything is dark. Uh, what I noticed is that when color is in shadow, it gets very muted and kind of diluted. So generally when you're painting lips, you're going to use a pink or a red color, right? You want it to look natural. But here I use the exact same color as I did for the rest of the face and it worked just fine because the red was so muted out and so subdued that I really didn't need to, to add anything to it. Generally what I'll do is I'll paint lips with the same color, the same flesh tone as the face, but keep it lighter and then spray a very, very thin red or pink color on top of it just to shift the hue a little bit warmer to make the, the lips appear a bit pinker or a little bit more red. If you're new to art and you're just learning how to draw or paint or sculpt, just understand that when you work on something, it's going to take a long time. You're looking at this video and we're maybe 13, 15 minutes into it and it looks like I finished this whole thing really quickly. The truth is this took me about 8 or 10 hours just for this face here without the hair and the ears and I've been doing this for a while. A big part of working on art and working on paintings or drawings is learning to to work slowly and take your time and appreciate that time when you're working on it it's almost like a a type of meditation and kind of relaxing what i like to do though is i'll work for maybe about a half hour to 45 minutes then stop do something else and then come back to it. When you come back to it, you see it with fresh eyes and you'll start to notice things that you may want to change that you didn't see before. For example, a hue may be slightly too warm or too cool and you want to shift it. Maybe some values a little too bright and it's looking like it's sticking out too far so you want to knock it back. There's a whole bunch of things that you'll come back to when you when you stop and walk away from it. Another thing too that's really important to to remember is that fatigue starts to set in. If you're working for a few hours at a time, for me anyway, I notice I'll start to rush. And when I start rushing, it doesn't become a fun process anymore. It's this way of trying to get the, the painting or the drawing done as quickly as possible. And it feels much more like a chore than it does a process that is generally enjoyable for me. 
So take your time and enjoy the process. A great thing to do is find something that you care about, maybe a family member, maybe a pet like a dog or a cat, whatever it is, find something important to you and use that as a reference to draw because it's something familiar, something you care about and something you love. So make your own artwork a little bit more unique and important to you. And learn to love the process because this is something that'll be your companion for the rest of your life. You'll also learn to see the world a little bit differently. You'll pay attention to some things that you may have not noticed before. And you'll also get some time to yourself to sit and really work, almost like a form of meditation. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one.